Driving Ivan here and I'm going to show you every single exotic car here at the 2018 Washington DC Auto Show. Now that is an interior. You can see my review of the Rolls-Royce Wraith for the driving experience of these very special cars, but uh, you don't have to drive it to know it's special. Just look. Of course you can have it in hardtop or convertible and uh, I prefer the open air motoring. You see these things kind of like minivans when you're in Hollywood. It's kind of funny. They're everywhere. And that's why they really let you customize the interior and the exterior. If you've got a favorite shade of lipstick or if you have a favorite tie that you'd like them to match the exterior to, no problem. They can do it for a price, of course. And if you want something a bit faster, here's a half million dollars worth of Lamborghini Aventadore S. Pretty cool. Razor-like lines. And uh, a bit different than the McLarens that you see. And certainly the Aston Martin. Love that color. Woo! Bentley is back there. And uh, it's like the new Bentayga back there, actually. Slightly different shape than the one I reviewed. Check out my review elsewhere on YouTube. But, man... This one is really striking a chord with me. So this Lamborghini here, the Huracan, has a V10. And this one has the, of course, 12-cylinder Lamborghini engine. So either way, a lot of fun. This is actually a used car, but does come with a warranty. But in terms of Lamborghinis, I don't think there's really any other Lamborghini out there that does it for me as much as this one. I do like the earlier cars, like the Espada and the, the kind of wild Lamborghinis, but this one here, the Countach, when a worker saw the clay makeup of this model in the factory that they were working on before it was introduced in the early 70s, he walked in and he said, Countach, and that is a dialect expression meaning like, well, I'll edit it, kind of like, holy crap, and... Uh, that is what they decided to call the Countach, after all. And this one is really one of the more desirable ones. The Quattro valve. Four valves per cylinder. 12 cylinder. That's 48. That's a lot of valves. So, um, mechanically, these are pretty cool. They look pretty outrageous, of course, with the rear wing. Some people like them, some people don't. Kind of like the Porsche 911. I kind of like them without the wing, but in this case, with this Countach, I like the Countach with the wing. I think you need to be over the top. I don't like the Evolution ones, which were a bit later, 25th anniversary, but uh, this one to me is perfect. And hey, all black, that's fine. <laughs> it's a car that uh, the great automotive journalist, David E. Davis, who was the publisher of Automobile Magazine said, you know, if someone handed you the keys to this thing, you would be horrified to drive it. And uh, it's kind of funny. He has some very famous quotes, famous to me anyway. He was interviewed on 60 Minutes back in the 80s about this car. And he had some great things to say. And he basically said, anybody who thinks they're worth anything should have a 12-cylinder automobile in their lifetime. And you can see around you, there are a lot of, well, that's a 10, but over here and over here there are many many 12 cylinder vehicles in here because hey it's exotic they used to do 16 cylinder vehicles they used to do all sorts of wild stuff but really now the 12 cylinder is the ultimate engine smooth as silk instant power and uh, no turbos or anything needed not to say that they don't put turbos on them but uh this Countach is just done right with the blacked out wheels. I'm not sure those were original. This one looks like it was doctored a bit, but, um, you know, still looks great. They're usually silver or gold, the wheels. This Ferrari right here, we have three Ferraris. The Enzo and the F40 and the Daytona here. Strangely, I was never a fan of the Daytona. It's a cool car. It's a great Ferrari, front-engined, 12-cylinder luxury GT touring Ferrari with the Borani wire wheels which are absolutely amazing 
but I don't know. For me, the shape of this one, eh, never really spoke to me. There's some NART spider versions built that are topless, but the, this is actually where these seats got their name. They're called the Daytona seats, and you can get these still today in modern Ferraris as an option. You can order the Daytona seats, and that's what it is. It does, of course, have the famous H-gate Ferrari shifter, and uh, wow, that's really what the Ferrari is all about. A grand touring car. Okay, maybe this one's winning me over. Maybe I do like it now. I would still take other Ferraris instead of it if given the option. But it is a darn fine looking car and it is a classic Ferrari in all sense of the words. 12 cylinder, front engine, luxury GT. There you go. Moving on to the F40. This is the last car that was produced when Enzo Ferrari was alive. It's the last car he oversaw. It's the first real kind of hyper exotic sports car and uh, it really made famous being able to see the engine from the back which pretty much every Ferrari has nowadays and uh, it did a lot of things right. It's really one of the last supercars to not have a lot of driver aids. You know, if you <laughs> do something wrong in this Ferrari F40, well guess what? You're in trouble because there's no electronics to save you. And uh, again, the fact that Enzo Ferrari oversaw the production of this right before he died and signed off on it, the 40th anniversary car for Ferrari, this is it, the Ferrari F40. Very, very cool. I've actually followed one of these before on a sort of a outing in the country, and I can attest they are extremely fast. <laughs> Zero to 60, I think, in the three-second range back then in 1989, that was insane. And uh, fast forward to today, this is sort of the modern version, Ferrari Enzo, and uh, it's uh, sort of the same deal. Advanced, certainly. Notice you don't shift it yourself. That's kind of strange. But notice that you can still see the engine there through the glass, and uh, you can see the family resemblance from here to here, and you can see the progression. And uh, of course, Ferrari red. Collectors call it resale red because if you want to sell a Ferrari after you buy it, you want a red one because <laughs> everybody wants a red Ferrari. Except me, I'll have a blue one. The Bentley Mulsan. You can see my review of the Mulsan Speed, which is the quick version, but this is $362,000 worth of Bentley right here. Beautiful big Bentley badge and grill up front, unmistakable, and uh, 12 cylinders of course. Let's check out the interior, it's kind of tough, basic black there, but there's really nothing basic about these Bentleys, it's got the emblem on the seats and uh, the headliner is very special as well, everything's special, all the materials are just really, really fine. Okay, another Aston Martin here. Let's check it out. I'll show you the window sticker. Why not? Check it out. There you go. Let's just zoom in. What do we got? $350,000. There you go. Beautiful interior. Check it out. Excellent. Black and white. Kind of reeks speed, doesn't it? Another very cool Bentley. Love these interiors. It's the Bentley sort of stitching on the seats. And funny thing is, if you've driven some Hyundais, well, you know that they have the same stitching and you know where they got it from. And it does look great in a Hyundai. And of course, it does look great in a Bentley. And uh, look, it's modern, sure, but it still has that something special that only a manufacturer like Bentley can bring. A lot of people don't know, but really the distinct differences between Bentley and Rolls-Royce, Bentley does have quite a racing history with uh, the racing Bentleys back in the day, and uh, they were very successful in early motor racing. So their racing history, that's why they have cars named like the Brooklyns and the Mulsan, because those are actually straights on famous racetracks. 
like Le Mans. So there is a racing history here and you can even see it in cars like this Bentega, their SUV. Now SUVs are of course the most popular and best-selling type of automobile in the US and probably in the world these days approaching because people want extra space they want the ability to carry their whole family and uh, whatever they happen to be doing that day if they're going to the beach if they're going bike riding you can do it all with these SUVs and uh, why should you suffer now you need the best of the best and this Bentley Bentayga gives it to you check out my review of the Bentley Bentayga elsewhere on YouTube there's also this display here on art and motion and uh, they basically have motorcycles tricked out cars as well ready to be painted by artists and uh, I think art cars are super super cool BMW of course has some of the finest collections of art cars Warhol did one Lichtenstein I think uh, there's so many famous artists that have done BMWs but I really love Warhol's the basically the 3.0 CS race car that uh, kind of the Batwing car it looks amazing but uh, the art continues for the next generation and uh, that's a good thing because cars and art are very synonymous in many ways because let's face it take a look cars and motorcycles are art if you look at the detail of this interior you can see that there's a lot of artistic sensibility that went into the creation of this car and the interior and the exterior and of course when you're dealing with large companies like Ford you know the big ones Chrysler Fiat you know, they have teams of people that think about designing the interior and then with some of these hot rods you basically have one person that does it all and there's no sort of corporate board that says hey you got to do this or you got to do that now it's all up to the person that creates it so that's pretty cool or you can start with something that is mass produced and really really make it your own and uh, I think that's pretty kick-ass to take a car and really put your own spin on it even if you hate it you got to say hey you know someone loves this thing and it's cool in some ways it's cool so this is pretty cool it's kind of reminiscent of those speed racer lines on the Mach 5 I think <laughs> white and red on that one and this one uh, basically taking the fixed roof Miata here and making it a bold artistic statement and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool through and see the rest of these cars back here. Is this a can amp? It's really custom. Polaris actually. <laughs> it's the Joker Polaris. Pretty cool. You really gotta walk around these cars. Sort of a 360 view to see the entire car. Case in point here, this one looks really cool from the back. Check that out. Very nice. And here with that crazy wing, Kaju. <laughs> the Z cars are um, really, really nice. These are 350Zs, I believe, not the 370. They look a bit smaller, a bit different than the 370. I could be wrong, they're so customized. And it's tough to tell sometimes, but um, you can really start with any car, but cars like these that are sporting in nature and fun to drive anyway, well, when you trick them out a bit more and customize them, it just increases the experience. And uh, there, that's what it's all about right there. Customizing and improving performance in many ways. This Jeep is pretty darn cool. Wow, huge wheels. Shows you how influential movies are. And uh, this is very similar to the Lamborghini 
Huracan, Gallardo, basically same layout, probably same chassis too. Maybe not exotic in the modern sense, but uh, these fins, wow, these are probably some of the most recognizable fins on any automobile, starting with the 57 Chevy, this is probably a 59 Cadillac, and uh, they really took it to the next level. The most elegant and opulent, that was Cadillac in the late 50s, 60s, 70s, and really up until now, it's just that that opulence and elegance has changed. They're now more sort of sporting luxury cars. And they just have a whole different interpretation, but I really know these cars very well. My dad's car was a 1970 Coupe de Ville convertible. And so it was just really a more modern version of this one, exactly the same. And uh, not much changed. You used to hitch your head on this thing when you got in the back seat sometimes if you weren't thinking about it. Just a long bench seat in front, long bench seat in back. And uh, that's what's great about these cars. Pretty much the same. Now my uncle and granddad had this car. They had a bunch of them. And uh, I had some great times in this car too. Borrowing it on many occasions. And uh, we had a white on white with a it also had the black hubcaps as I remember it's totally white except for the black hubcaps and uh, so there you go but again the interior very much similar this one looks like it's uh, being prepped and used as storage for something still but uh, anyway it's definitely a show car it says last year because really they stopped making convertibles after this for a while 1976 i believe was the year and they just stopped making them because of the federal regulations they just couldn't build a safe convertible so they stopped and it's kind of a shame because cadillacs are synonymous with convertibles in the most luxurious sense you got to be able to put the top down and cruise to the country club right well this was an end of an era there were some convertibles in the 80s uh, mostly there were special editions and done by companies like ASC, the American Sunroof Corporation. But uh, yes, an icon and the end of an era, just as much as this 1959 Coupe de Ville is as well. Nice to see that Buick is carrying on the tradition of American convertibles. And uh, it's pretty much classic. It's uh, four seats, maybe five. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, maybe not. Um, four seats and convertible. Buick makes some really nice cars. Check out my Buick reviews elsewhere on YouTube. There it is, basically for 62.5, you get yourself the ZL1 Camaro. That is one bitch in Camaro. <laughs> nice. Nice engine coming from the Corvette, really. But uh, six speed manual and uh, flat bottom steering wheel, pretty cool. Love that black gas cap, very cool. Looks like a carbon fiber wing, and uh, it's great. Perhaps even more desirable than the Corvette. Hmm. I don't know, I think people still want a ZL1 Corvette. But uh, Camaro is pretty kick ass. And here it is, the special edition Ford Mustang Bullet. Made famous by the movie, of course. Some people say it's the best car scene in a movie. But um, there you have it. Kind of upset they don't have the uh, 60s version here. But oh well, this one is still cool. And let's try to see what they did for the interior here, shall we? That's right, Drive and Ivan takes you right inside. There you go. So, pretty basic Mustang. Some special features on it, though, as well. And really, it's all about the look and the green paint, isn't it? Of course, and the wheels. I think they got them basically right with a modern interpretation. So there you go, the Ford Mustang bullet. And of course, there's lots of other Ford Mustangs on display as well. So for about $50,000, you get the SRT 392 
Challenger. Pretty cool car. I like the wine color. And I've uh, been really impressed with certainly Dodge's cars. I like their infotainment screens. I like the way everything's laid out. I like the way you can control things from behind the steering wheel. And uh, it's just a great all-around car. And in this case, it's a great muscle car that you can comfortably drive every day and have really everything you want safety luxury and speed speaking of safety luxury and speed Alfa Romeo Giulia and the Stelvio yes the Stelvio an Alfa Romeo SUV very important in their model lineup as the SUV is the biggest selling segment in America Check out my reviews of actually two Alfa Romeo Julias elsewhere on YouTube. Nice cars. The Challenger in the sort of honeybee configuration. Challenger TA. Looks good. Definitely a throwback to the muscle cars of yore. And uh, I like it. What's not to like? Nothing super special from Fiat this year. Just their normal production cars. But uh, they are great cars, I think. So there you have it. Fiat for 2018. So now you can have your Miata as a retractable fast back or in standard same old style, which is the Roadster convertible, which I think is the best way to have it. But you know, stiffer chassis here means better performance. But uh, check out my review of this one and many of the older Mazda Miatas. I also do a should you drive an automatic or a manual with uh, Miata, check out that review, and even back to the first one, the NA Miata, I reviewed that one, so check out all my Miata reviews. There are great cars, any here, any way you get them. So here it is, everybody. It's back. It's no longer the Fisker Karma. No, no, no. It's just the Karma. So maybe Karma will pay off for them. And uh, though they lost the battle with Tesla, they are back, and the car still looks great. Certainly reminiscent of uh, BMW's front end there. But uh, it's a really cool all-electric vehicle, and uh, certainly a viable alternative to the Tesla. At $35,000, I'm sure many of my viewers are lusting after this Honda Civic Type R. After all, the uh, Civic is certainly one of those cars that everyone loves to customize and for good reason because there's so many parts available to make it your own and I think Honda really has done a good job of making the Civic Type R pretty desirable as is so there you go cool car performance for the masses at a very fair price look at this one this is pretty cool Nissan is linked in with Star Wars this year. The Last Jedi. I did see the movie. And uh, it was wonderful. And there was actually some Nissan stuff going on in it. Although, of course, it's futuristic, so you really couldn't tell as such. But they've done a good job of turning this Nissan Rogue into sort of a Rogue One <laughs> transport vehicle. It even has the droid on top. I forgot what they're calling R2-D2 now, but I know it's not R2-D2, it's something different. <laughs> At any rate, this is pretty kick-ass and cool Nissan Rogue. May the force be with you. And of course, they have the Dragon Slayer, the Nissan GTR. Check out my full review elsewhere on YouTube of the GTR. What a great car. And they also have the Nismo version of the 370Z. Well, there's exotics everywhere you look here at the DC Auto Show. And three here, this one, the 512TR. That's Testarossa. This car started off in 1984 as the Testarossa. And this is sort of an update, the 512TR. I think it looks a lot better, actually. Testarossa means redhead. That means the cylinder heads on the engine are red. Second in line is the Mura. And that is just such a beautiful car. Bob Wallace developed this right before... Valentino Balboni became the Lamborghini test driver. You can check out my review with Valentino Balboni elsewhere on YouTube. And then you have this Ferrari sort of challenge Stradale car. So this one, the 512TR, came about a little later. And I think 
looks a little bit fresher than the earlier Testarossa. This one, Testarossa is one word, and in the 1957 version, the 1958, the original Testarossa, it's actually Testa and Rosa, two different words, redhead in Italian, and this car was so iconic, they called it the cheese grater sides. It was pretty controversial. A lot of people did not like the fact that Ferrari went with this sort of cheese grater intake, but the rear view, side view mirrors became iconic as well. You could buy these and have them as art in your office if you wanted to. Maybe even pencil holders for your office, but uh, very iconic. This Testarossa started in 1984, but the original pontoon Fender Ferrari Testarossa from 1957 was really, really a cool car, and that was the inspiration for this one. The Miura here, really these eyelashed sort of headlights and uh, the intakes and just the whole shape of it, in fact. This was really the first exotic car. Mid-engine, transversely mounted 12-cylinder engine. Such an icon, these beautiful gold knockoff wheels that you see in all the great 60s cars like the Jaguar, the racing Jags, and uh, wow, just such a great car. And this is the Mira S, which is really the upgrade of the version, and it means it's faster, better, and uh, really it just has that much more speed and that much more presence and look. This is also Valentino Balboni's favorite car because he was developing it and uh, it really is an icon. This is very cool. The Jaguar XF Sport Brake, they're calling it. The shooting brake is a two-door wagon, and uh, this one is not that, but I am so pleased that they brought back a wagon to the U.S. market. It's so cool. Last time it was the X-Type, and uh, this one, I think, uh, is a much more premium vehicle, the XF. You can actually see my review of the XF Premium elsewhere on YouTube, sedan version, an older one, but uh, Jag has really innovated here with this sport brake, and I love to see it, because the wagon is just such a good vehicle. I think it's better than the SUV style, because they have a higher center of gravity. This is a lower center of gravity, therefore it handles better, and uh, it's just more traditional. But, of course, the SUV shape won out in America. Bigger, higher, better, bolder. But uh, I'm glad to see Jag here keeping the tradition up with their new Sport Brake XF. Here we see the Acura NSX. If you'd like to see my driving impressions of this one, look elsewhere on YouTube for a full review. But a very cool, very innovative car here. The Acura NSX, the new version. Here we see a long line of Mustangs. This one, 1964, the first year, 64 and a half. And uh, you have the GT350H, it stands for Hertz, a Hertz rental car version. You can actually rent them. They're worth a lot of money these days. The GT350. Jim Morrison actually got a car similar to this one when uh, their album went number one. And he famously wrecked that, but uh, its whereabouts are to this day unknown. And this is also a 67, looks like. And uh, on down the line here, that one's pretty cool, custom, resto mod. And uh, nice to see all these beautiful Mustangs lined up in a row, so you can see the progression. On to the modern day cars. Really, really cool. And here, the Mach 1. This is the Shelby version of the Mustang, the GT500. and. Uh, really really cool you can see my review of my Shelby Dakota pickup truck elsewhere on YouTube it's a convertible really cool car 1989 check it out okay so this is the Alpina B6 and basically they take the standard BMW sedan and basically they Alpina it which usually means they supercharge it and they change a bit of the interior as well and you can see inside it's just absolutely gorgeous and it has the Alpina steering wheel and uh, heated ventilated seats, a little bit of a special trim level too, and uh, things like this. Alpina lit up there and it's just a faster, 
and better than the stock BMW, but tastefully so, and not over the top. Of course, the famous Alpina wheels too. So cool. So there you have it, the Alpina B6. The M2 coupe here with the side skirts. Just gotten a hold of a BMW 320i and it's a little bit hot rodded. So this is really the spiritual successor of that car. It's pretty much one of the smallest BMWs you can get, which to me makes it the most sporting. Very cool. LC500 Lexus here. You can see bits of the LFA in it. So it's kind of like a modern version of that. It's so cool that uh, they've sort of evolved the design and it doesn't look too dissimilar from the RCs as well, the RCF over here. Look for my review on the track of the LC or the RCF and the RCV6. I actually do a split lap time so you can see how much faster the RCF is with the torque vectoring. An amazing car for sure. Lexus has a lot of really, really nice cars here and this LC 500 I think is one of the coolest. It's really nice to see Porsche here in full force with the GT3 RS, the Targa over there, and uh, it's really nice to see them here because people see these cars and they lust after them. I think it definitely does sell cars even if many of the people just come to drool over them. You know, when people become successful, lots of times they want a nice car like this one and they go out and get it. And it's kind of funny here, a long time ago I drew my better version of the Panamera and this is exactly what I drew. I don't know why they did the hatchback sort of dropped off at the end there, but now they've made it more of a wagon look and it looks so much better. The Panamera here and it's the turbo here. Very nice, but it definitely looks better than sort of the hatchback version that they had before. Love it. Check out my review of the 996 Porsche 911, which I just purchased and also some other versions of that which tell you why I purchased it. And of course my 82 Targa and the brand new Carrera on the track as well. And the 718 as well too, the Boxster. The Audi TT, I'm a big fan. I do have a nice custom version of that. Check out my review of that. And also check me out driving it in the snow. Great car, but I wish they'd bring back the baseball glove leather, but still really nice here. The TT RS, cool car. Here we have the V10 version, which is really like the Lamborghini Huracan, and, uh, but it's the Audi R8 V10 Plus. Really, really cool. And Spider nonetheless. And there you have it. Every single exotic car here at the Washington DC Auto Show. And uh, they look great from up high too, don't they? This one right here is certainly legendary for Gen Xers, probably baby boomers too. Maybe even some millennials, but uh, this was in so many posters. The Countach, it's just an icon. I think of all these cars here, you have the modern cars that uh, certainly, well, they're driving you more than you're driving them. And everything from this Ferrari F40 back, which means the Ferrari F40, the Ferrari Daytona, and the Lamborghini Countach here, they're all great cars, but really, these three right here are driver's cars. You're driving it, and uh, that's basically it. I definitely enjoy driving sports cars as much as gazing upon them. I just bought a Porsche 996 for that reason as a daily driver. Check out my review of that one and why I chose to buy that car. Also, my 1982 911 Targa and some other crazy cars in my collection, Citroën. Lotus Europa, Aston Martin, MG, there's a lot there. Check out my personal cars, check out my car reviews, and thanks for watching. I'm driving Ivan.